Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, Rabbi Stephen here, Rav Shmuel, with you. This week's uh, Torah portion, this week's Sedra, Parsha, portion, whichever word you prefer, uh, Pekka Day. And this also brings to close the book of Exodus. Now, before we get into our discussion on, on this week's uh, Torah portion, you know, let's recognize a group of women that come in here and they do a lot of the cooking and preparing for the wonderful kiddishes that we have on Saturday. Kiddish, of course, means you know something holy, and we refer to it as wine. That's typically the Saturday lunch that we have. That would be Ellen and Anne and Sheva and, um, and Gilma and you know a few others. And you know, I, I forget some of the names of the folks. I'll get you next week. You know, but but thank you so much for all you do in helping uh, us make our Saturday morning shachrit service even more special by bringing, you know, the refreshments and having a lunch and we can all get together and talk. And, you know, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, these same people, these same women also are there to help serve, including uh, Bernard and my wife, Rachel, Christine, whichever name you prefer. We like, you know, Rachel's the Hebrew name, Christine her given name. So um, anyway, you know, I, I, people that know me know that I like to recognize people for what they do. You know, a, a synagogue, things don't just happen. You know, it takes a lot of volunteers. It takes a lot of people pitching in, working together to make it such a special experience, a special place, because, you know, this is our sacred space. And if I may segue into this week's portion, Pekka Day, which once again brings to a close the book of Exodus. Here we have a discussion, sort of a redo, a, a repeat of what of, of the Mishkan being built. This time, uh, you know, Vayachel is where we had uh, a lot of the physical the structure. Now we have a lot of the clothes and the menorah and the anointing. And what's really interesting is that this particular portion isn't just one repeat, it's actually two when you look at it, because most of the portion discusses uh, Bezalel and Holyob, our two master craftsmen, our two uh, general contractors, if you will, that that directed the construction. You know, in Be'achel, they directed the construction of the physical structure and the furnishings that went in it. And this week, uh, they discussed and they oversaw the uh, construction and the making of the various garments for the high priest and the priests, and talks about how they put it together, what was used, and talks about the stones. But, you know, interestingly enough, at the very end of this portion, it also says that Moses brought them in, and Moses put them together. So according to the commentary, this time in the tikkun, this is the art scroll tikkun, I have to hold it back there, it's here, it's such a big book. Um, it discusses how um, Moses, that the construction of the Mishkan finished on December, on, on Kislev 25, on the 25th of Kislev, which we know today is Hanukkah. But God had Moses hold on to everything until the first moon, the first moon of the year, which is the month of, we now call Nisan which is when the uh, Israelites left Egypt. Of course, 15 days later was Passover. So everything kind of sat, it was organized. And then on the first day of the year, of the new year, and yes, Nisan is the secular new year, is when everything was put together and the people got to observe. Now, the tikkun, the commentary also goes on to say how, um, you know, since the date of Kislev 25 was kind of, cheated out of being a special day. You know, God, Hashem kind of remembered that. And that, of course, is the day of the miracle of, of Hanukkah, the rededication. Uh, that's what Hanukkah means. Dedication of the second temple by the Hasmoneans, the Judah and the, Ma the Maccabee and the Maccabees and the warriors that drove off the Seleucids. So <clears throat> it's interesting, this particular portion. Now, in most other years, Vayachel and Pekude are typically read together, and it's it's a fairly long reading. Uh, you've got a lot of detail, and it does, and the Torah does not spare detail about what was made and how it was made. 
So this year being a leap year, and we are about to um, observe the new moon, the new month of Adar II, the second Adar, um, we have to divide the portions out because we have the extra four weeks and you know some of the portions are not doubled. We double up portions in a regular year when there's not a leap year in order to uh, start our Torah during Sukkot Torah and then and then finish it, complete it, of course, during, you know, right before the high holidays or during the high holidays. So this way we read, we, we read it all and, uh, you know, we, we, we put the schedule of reading to the year. Okay. So, you know, of course, why do we do that? Uh, once again, because the secular year, the regular year that we observe in our regular life is based on, on, on the sun. Sun going, uh, the Earth going around the Sun, 365 days. The Moon is uh, 354 uh, days uh, to have the 12 months. So each year we're 11 days behind. So we have to get that extra month every few years in order to uh, catch up and make sure that all the holidays happen when they're supposed to. So, so it's interesting that the Torah spends so much attention, put so much attention. Usually it's sparse. I mean, look at, look at the first chapter of Genesis. You know, we have the, the discussion of creation. Two chapters, not even. I mean, you got one chapter and then, you know, it, it, intruding into the second chapter, we have, you know, Shabbat. And that's it. The whole creation, the whole universe gets formed in one chapter of Genesis. And yet the Mishkan, we get the instructions over a couple of portions earlier in Exodus, and then we get the discussion of the completion of the actual construction of it making it happen. So what do we have? We have the potential, right? And then the actual becoming reality. Now think about this as a model of creation, right? So God is the creative force. God is the force that creates and maintains and sustains. So God has this intention that the that that the material universe will be created. What is what does Genesis say? You know, let there be the earth, let there be the two firmaments, let there be the sun, the moon, and the stars, let there be the earth, let it sprout forth vegetation, let animals uh, inhabit it, and then finally man. And it all happens. <clears throat> so in the same way, we have God saying, let's create this Mishkan, let's create this tabernacle, a holy place where the Israelites can come and worship me and really have that relationship with Hashem. That's really what it is. It's not just a matter of worshiping. It's a matter of a relationship. Yes, we worship Hashem. And in return, God takes account of us. So we have the intention to build a Mishkan, and then we have the actual building, which kind of shows we have the spiritual dimension and then we have the physical dimension and the two are very much intertwined. And perhaps this is why there's so much attention to detail in the construction of the Mishkan, more detail than really any other discussions, any other situations or incidents that are, are happened in the rest of the Torah or even the rest of the Tanakh, the rest of the Hebrew scriptures. <clears throat> so. We see this as bringing the spiritual into the material and think of it that way. And it's very carefully laid out that as we think, so do we do. The, at each synagogue that we have now that we no longer have the temple is really a microcosm. Think about it, a microcosm of God's intentions, God's commands and our relationship with God. You know, in, in that way, we are always reminded that God is with us. We are with God. And in that relationship, we observe God's commandments. So as we say at the end of a book of the Torah, when we're finished, we say, Chazak, Chazak, Benit Chazak, strength, strength, and we shall be strong. That is our warrior's cry. So a few things coming up. Um, as you know, we're going to have, uh, we have a new moon. We have Rosh Chodesh, uh, 
the R2. And when is Purim? Purim is this year in the second Adar. Why? Because Purim is always 30 days before Passover. So when we have that leap year, when we have that extra Adar, Purim is moved to the second Adar, Adar 2, the 15th of Adar 2, rather than the 15th of just Adar. And as such, we're going to have a lot of things coming up. We've got Shabbat Across America coming up Friday. Uh, we're going to do this on Zoom because we want you to relax. We want you to have a meal at home. It's going to be kind of a group discussion. We're going to have maybe a short, probably a shorter service, a shorter service. And we're going to have more discussions. And that way it'll be kind of, you know, more informal. Then uh, on March 13th, on that Sunday, instead of Hebrew school, we will have a Purim Carnival, and there will be a Tefillin Clinic. I want all the B'nai Mitzvah kids. That's right. And anybody else, any other kids that would like to participate, we're going to learn how to put on Tefillin. Very important practice in Judaism. And then, of course, the 16th, March 16th, that evening, Wednesday evening, we're going to be reading the Megillah. You can make noise. You can drink. You know, we're going to, well, don't drink and drive, folks. We're going to be here in the synagogue, and we'll be broadcasting. So again, Shabbat Shalom, and look forward to seeing you at services.